Um, the next situation or the next topic is a an interesting situation. It's pretty controversial. It's the Slavovoinov uh, situation. We talked about this off camera yesterday. So basically, here's the, here's the backstory of what happened originally. So him and his wife were arguing at a Halloween party. He ripped off her costume and punched her in the jaw and demanded a divorce. Uh, he threw her down to the ground and started choking her and eventually kicked her like five or six times. Also punched her in in uh or sorry or also pushed her into a tv which cut her eye and like covered their room with blood Mm -hmm. and uh, she required eight stitches a tetanus shot and she said it wasn't the first time that something like this has happened so basically it's basically four years ago yeah kind of now because it happened at a halloween party so basically four years exactly and like you said took off her costume took off her glasses broke the glasses stepped on them in front of everybody they went home said i want a divorce you're not getting any of this money blah 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 and then punched her with a closed fist, yeah. like closed fist on a woman. Like that's douchebaggy. Like I'm sorry, but it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Um, and then knocked her to the ground, kicked her, choked her. She was screaming for help the entire time. Like pushed up against the TV, eight stitches in her face. So now he's appealing to come back in the mm-hmm. NHL, and the NHL is going through the an, an extensive investigation process, is what I read, uh, to see what actually happened if it's true if it's not uh so there's a lot of people that are just like and how are you even considering this the nhl preemptively suspended him yes they did before any legal action came they they you know the news came out they invest they did their own investigation i think a lot of leagues do this type of thing now it was one month after the i think i mentioned to you it was one month after the ray rice situation with the elevator yes so i mean that was hot on everybody's mind so i think it was just as soon as they found it would happen no you're done until we find out I think he served two months in jail and then was sent back. Yeah. He's been playing in the KHL as far as I know. Um, so if he if he's allowed back in. The question is, is does he deserve a second chance? And in my opinion, he does not. He did, I, I would say no like in my I'm, opinion as well. I'm like the, basically the legal season, uh, the system in North America is built on second chances. That's why you serve your time and you come out, in theory, a free man. I would argue you're never free man after that you have that rap I, or whatever. I agree. Yeah. But um, in this situation, I think the crime or the events that resulted in him being suspended are so heinous that he doesn't deserve ever again to come back. I agree. And he, like the NHL suspended him while it was going on. And then I think he, like he said, he, he served two months in jail and then he was sent back to Russia. He actually hasn't really served a big NHL suspension sentence so, so that's the question if he, if he does get allowed back in the in the in the nhl does he have to serve that suspension and and is the players association going to represent him because that's what their job yes, is that's true so the pa is like a lot of times the, the pa is kind of um interesting because it's like a player on a player like it, someone injures a guy and then the pa has to represent the defense and kind of the guy who got hurt and the yeah. guy who got who did it and generally it looks like they're they're more they're sticking up for the guy who caused the injury rather than the guy who got hurt. Right. Yep. In this situation, it's just a player and his wife. So the PA is only on one side of this argument. Mm. And I think they have to represent him because that's what they're there to do. I don't know if they'll push for it, but it's like I said, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he deserves to come back. Like sometimes the crime is just so bad that, so they, they legally have to represent him. They're going to represent him and they may be able to find an argument where, yes, he deserves to come back. He yeah. served his time. He's like, I think he pleaded to something and, and technically like in terms of like the, the law, he's, he's good now. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't allowed in the country. I think they kicked him out of the country and now he's allowed back into the country, but he still hasn't served anything officially from the NHL. So the question is if, the PA or whatever finds a way for him to be saying, yes, you mm-hmm. deserve to come back. Are you going to slap a huge suspension on him that by the time that suspension's over, he's basically useless? Like how long do you think the suspension would be? I don't know. Like years? I don't know. For Basically forcing him to stay out of the NHL. Like. Because he's not going to wait wait over here for th- two or three years. And I, I just think that like the Me Too stuff from this year, like 2018, 2017, I don't think the public would have any appetite it just makes the league look bad. It would make them look terrible. Even if the story wasn't true, even if it never happened and she was lying and he didn't actually do that, it would still make the league look bad for allowing him to come back in. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, if it didn't happen, that... 
but the league sucks. but what we do know for sure is that the league did their own investigation and they suspended him yes so obviously they found something they did yeah so um i don't know if 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 I was the league, I would be doing everything I can to say no. I'm sorry, but you're you're done. Like yep. they have the power to do that. If somehow the PA, you know, he goes to the PA and says you have to represent me. I'm part of your union or whatever, and yep. they find a way for it to get in. Then I hope the NHL finds a way to slap a huge suspension on him. I agree. That makes it basically worthless for him to try to come back. Do you know that there's already trade rumors with him? <laughs> really? Yeah. With uh, this... LA and Toronto, Nylander for Nylander for uh, him and. I can't remember the other name, but I can't. He's already being talked about. See, I, can, I can't see it because Toronto is half owned by Rogers, half owned by Bell. Basically, it's like a. I think they have ninety percent or something like that, and the other ten percent is owned by one other guy. And um, Ro- Rogers with Sportsnet and the Blue Jays actually just dealt with Roberto Osuna, who yes. had the same issue. Yes, and it wasn't even an option for them to keep him because they fired. They actually fired one of their analysts because he was making sexist remarks in Sportsnet. Ah. So they let him go. That was Greg Zahn. They let him go. They said, we have a zero tolerance policy. And then when the Asuna stuff came up, you had people like on the radio there saying, if you got rid of Greg for zero tolerance, then this guy has no spot in this lineup. Oh. And as soon as he was eligible to come back to play, he was gone. So huh. I, I just can't see a company like Rogers or Bell, which are basically the same company. They do the same things. They're they're publicly consumer, like mobile phones and internet and stuff like you could you could have a, a reputation that would make someone leave your company f- or leave your services for someone else, and I just I I don't think the market's there in Toronto for that. I yep, I agree. I I would hope it's not there anywhere for that, but we know that some teams, some markets will take a better player regardless and just yeah. say, well, this is his fresh start. He's going to go to counseling. I don't like that bull crap. I think that's bull crap. I think. Uh, well, you remember when Matt Cassian was traded at Montreal? And he played a couple of preseason games, and then he got in an accident, and he was under the influence. And Montreal and the league made him go to rehab or whatever. But Montreal was like, "See ya." Really? Shipped him off? No, I don't and remember like, that. They, they wouldn't even. They, they didn't care, even if he came out of rehab, completely successful. We don't want that. Like you made our team look bad. Exactly. You're done. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's under the influence. This is, yeah, heinously beating your wife on record, and doctors you know, medical files to, to back it up. And yeah. then you also have her saying that this is not the first time it's happened multiple times. Yeah. So buddy has obviously has anger issues. Like, like I said, at the, when we first started this, like it's a society built on second chances, but sometimes you don't deserve that second chance. Mm-hmm. And like, he's, uh, I think he's lucky. He's a Russian citizen mm-hmm. and he's not, he's Russian, right? Mm-hmm. He, I, if he was American, he, he probably would be in jail for, a long time like he was deported mm-hmm. i assume like literally deported it, it but... wasn't deported he was going to be deported but then he signed some uh, sort okay. of thing where it basically said okay i'm gonna leave and they said right. okay he served his two months signed some sort of paper said okay i'm gonna go back to russia now he's out of the country over time i don't know what happened if he served some sort of community sentence over there or something but basically he's allowed to come back to the country now yeah. now that he's allowed to come back to the country he's saying uh, he's applying to come back mm-hmm. and